Here are homework corrections for page 250, exercise or number 21. 21 says the combustion of acetylene gas is represented by this equation. Letter A asks how many grams of carbon dioxide and grams of water are produced when 52 grams of acetylene burns. So again, um, I like to summarize what they've given me. So they tell me that I have 52 grams of acetylene. And we're asked to figure out how many grams of carbon dioxide and how many grams of water we produce. So this is going to be two separate problems. And again, we see that we are going from one substance to another, so we'll have to use a mole ratio. So um, again, it doesn't matter which one you start with, so I'm going to just start with the, ox or the carbon dioxide. So I start with my given, which is 52 grams of the acetylene. And... I'm going to use molar mass to convert grams of acetylene to moles of acetylene. And then my only way to change from one substance to another is to use my mole ratio, so moles of acetylene to moles of carbon dioxide and then moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. Okay. So coming back and filling in our numbers, in our molar mass, again, the easy number is one in front of moles, and for acetylene, it's 26.04 grams. Um, for our mole ratio, it's our coefficient, so we have a coefficient of 4 and a coefficient of 2. And again, in front of our molar mass, 1 is in front of our moles. And for carbon dioxide, it's 44.01 um, is the mass. So again, I have to multiply by numbers in the numerator and divide by numbers in the denominator. And I should have three significant figures, so you should get 176 grams of carbon dioxide. Basically, we're going to do the same problem again. Okay, so we're going to start with our given. We always want to start with our given and not something we've calculated in case we've made a mistake. Again, we're going to use the molar mass of acetylene to convert it to um, moles. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right, sorry about that interruption. So for a second one, it's gonna look a whole lot like the first one, so we start with our 52 grams of our acetylene. We're gonna use molar mass to convert grams to moles. Then, again, we're gonna have moles of acetylene in the bottom and moles of this time water because that's what we're changing to on the top and moles of water on the bottom and molar mass to convert moles to grams. So again easy number um, or our numbers in our mole ratio come from our coefficient so we're going to have a two at a 2, and our easy number molar mass is 1, and we're going to have 18.01 here because we add up 1 oxygen and 2 hydrogens. And um, again, you have some multiplying to do, some dividing to do in this one. You should end up with about 36.0 grams of water when you're finished. 21B says how many grams of oxygen are required to burn the 52 grams of acetylene? So again, this one is saying start with our 52 grams of acetylene and figure out how many grams of oxygen we need. Very similar problem to what we've been doing, okay? So we're still going to start with our 52 grams of acetylene. Again, we're going to use molar mass to convert grams of acetylene to moles of acetylene. We're going to use a mole ratio to convert moles of acetylene to moles of oxygen this time because we're converting to oxygen. And then molar mass again to convert moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. 
Again, our first conversion factor here is molar mass, so again, the easy number is 1 in front of moles, and our mass for acetylene hasn't changed, it's still 26.04. Again, our mole ratio, our numbers come from our coefficients, so we have a 5 and a 2. Again, molar mass, easy number is the 1 in front of moles, and again, we add up two oxygens, and so we're going to get 32.0 here for um, oxygen, and even 0, 0. So we have um, three significant figures. So your calculator gives you like 159.9 or something like that. But with three significant figures, it's going to be 160 with a decimal point grams of oxygen. Okay. So um, that answers that question. Letter C says, use the answers from A and B to show that this equation obeys the law of conservation of mass. So we know for our reactants that we have 52 grams of acetylene. We just figured out that we have 160 grams of oxygen. So we're going to add these two together and figure out that we have 212 grams of our reactants. Over here, we knew that we have 176 and 36, so we have 176 grams of carbon dioxide. We figured out that we had 36 grams of water. Those are our products. We're going to add those together. We figure out we have 202 grams of our products, which again means that we have proven the law of conservation of mass here because we have the same mass of our reactants and our products. I hope that helps if you were struggling.